Good afternoon, hello, and welcome to the Omni Coalition news show, aka Talkness. This show is an amalgam of strange, weird, bizarre, off the wall, and otherwise things you don't normally see anymore from most news sources these days. During a time of political overabundance and divisiveness, we present you with more unifying topics to discuss, for the most part. For links to those articles, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar of the description below. Anyway, I am Xander, and today I am joined by... Protoblog. And in the live... And Go ahead. No, uh, yeah, and Noah. And Noah! Yeah. And Noah! Yeah, no, I was going to introduce you in the live studio yeah. audience because you said you were munching oh. munching. But, uh, I yeah. am. I am eating, I am eating lunch. I will stay mostly quiet. Are you eating delicious crab meat? It's chicken. Ah. Uh, tuna. Chicken of the sea. Anyway, today is Monday, uh, Moon's Day, also known as Monday, uh, December 12th, 2022. So let's jump into the news today, shall we? From Rebel News, we have U.S. federal court shuts down Biden mandate to force Catholic hospitals to perform transgender surgeries. So this was a mandate by our presidency administration to force Catholic hospitals to perform transgender surgeries, which is incredibly illegal. Um... So let's see here. A federal court has shut down a Biden administration mandate that would have violated the religious rights of several Catholic organizations by forcing them to perform or pay for transgender surgeries. On Friday, the Eighth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals affirmed the decision by a North Dakota uh, lower court to grant uh, permit, permanent injunctive. Okay, why can't I read? To grant permanent injunctive relief to block the Biden administration's mandate because it's uh, quote intrusion upon the Catholic plaintiffs in quote or plaintiffs uh, exercise of religion is sufficient to show irreparable harm in quote. Uh, as detailed by the National Review, the decision reflects a previous Texas case in August where the Fifth Circuit Court per permanently blocked the Biden administration's effort to force, out, uh, to force doctors affiliated with Christian medical associations to provide gender-affirming care to individuals who identify as transgender. The plaintiffs in the Texas case uh, against the Biden administration included the Christian medical associations representing thousands of doctors. Quote, we now have two different federal court of appeals saying... The Biden administration is permanently, pardon me, mm, it's weird, permanently blocked from forcing religious doctors in hospitals, in quotes, to perform transgender surgeries in, uh, in violation of their conscience and Luke Goodrich, attorney with the Beckett Fund, who represents the plaintiffs. So essentially, yeah, um, like our, our uh, government was trying to force a religious, um, uh, medical field uh, into doing things against its beliefs, which is, you know, that's against everything. You know, that that's not just against, you know, uh, you know, our articles, you know, of uh, independence and whatnot, but that's that's against, you know, humanity right there. So, but that's not surprising coming from, you know, these people. But, but yeah, what say you guys? I think that a lot of money went into making that happen. But not a lot of thought went into making it happen because they there were there's just no way that's going to fly with the U.S. Constitution anyway. Well, these people blow their nose with the Constitution all the time, so <laughs> with dollars, know. I mean U.S. dollars. Yeah, yeah. I would uh, like to read uh, from a law text from 1791 to you. All right, which which is called the First Amendment. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Bingo. Yeah, they can they can't force someone to change their sexual you know, their sex. <coughs> Bingo. Well no, they, it's not that they're forcing them to change their gender or whatever, but they're trying to force Christian medical uh, you know, facilities like yeah. hospitals. They're trying to force them to do these gender reassignment surgeries and everything, which goes against their, you know, religious beliefs. And, you know, not to mention, you know, the... It's, um, it's kind of forcing someone to do... Exactly. You know, what you, what you shouldn't have to, yeah. Exactly. Anyway, let's move on up here. More from Rebel News. Uh, Sam Bankman Freud said he's too busy to show up in person to the House Financial Services Committee hearing. What? Uh, this is the guy that we were talking about the other week. The uh, guy that flew off to Argentina, or he tried to. Uh, so is this the same S thing? Like SBF, this is S, S Sam B. Bankman. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. 
Uh, well, let's see here. It says here, Sam Bankman fried does not intend to testify in person when he is called to Congress to answer questions about the collapse of his crypto empire, FTX. Oh, this thing. Okay. Speaking yeah, on the Twitter... He'll be, he'll be arrested. He'll be arrested if he shows up in person. Yeah, that's why he's, he's hiding like yeah. a coward. It continues on. Speaking on a Twitter space on Monday, Bankman fried said he that he is quite overbooked and will be attending the hearing remotely. Yeah, sure. Lawmakers at the House Financial Services Committee are preparing to summon Bankman Freed on Tuesday over the collapse of his crypto company, which saw tens of billions of dollars wiped out. Oh my god. I wonder how the IRS feels about this person. Huh? You know, the IRS? Yeah. If the IRS cared, they would have already had him in custody by now. Yeah, um, but you, you don't think that they, can they be paid off? I don't know if they're kind of about money. Yeah, well, they are about, they are the money. So. That's internal revenue. Yeah, yep. service. So speaking to, quote, unusual whales, end quote, on a Twitter space... Uh, Bankman Freed confirmed that he will be showing up, but only remotely from his home in the Bahamas. Uh, pressed on whether his refusal to appear in person in Washington, D.C. was due to his fear of being arrested, Bankman Freed said he was concerned about paparazzi. Well, you hit the nail on the head right there, Noah. Like, he's he's being a coward and hiding in the Bahamas. Like I don't think I will be arrested, in quotes, yes. he said. Uh, yeah, he also added that he would be open to appearing before the Senate Banking Committee on Wednesday to answer questions about his company's implosion. And for further reading on this article, news. for further reading on this article, please uh, refer to the link in the underbar of the description. Uh, give the give this website the foot traffic they put in the the work. I'm just reading this for you guys. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Bankman Freed's going to be on the news in the future and on the TV, you know, like the TV news. I hope he gets arrested because uh, he's yeah. screwed over so many people. Like Tom Brady of all people got uh, is is wrapped up in this lawsuit. Yeah, so. but the thing is, he actually stole a billion dollars of users' own money, like the money they put on the system. Uh, like the, he stole a billion. He moved money that he shouldn't have moved. That's ridiculous. So yes, yeah, so and he should. He should not be able, like he should not be out of prison or jail or whatever. Justice needs to come swift and hard to this guy, in ways uh, I can't express on air. So yeah. But anyway. I'm <laughs> the more he talks, the more he gets himself into trouble. Yep. But that sounds like me. <laughs> anyway, more from Rebel News. House of Commons clerk accused of sleeping on the job and political bias retires after five years. Good. So, it says here, uh, Charles Robert will resign from his role as clerk at the House of Commons on January 13th, 2023. Robert announced his decision on Wednesday to members of Parliament who are part of the Board of Internal Economy, uh... Anyway, is this in the UK? Yes. This in the UK? Yes. Okay. Saying he would retire and that, quote, though it has not been without its challenges, serving as their clerk has been an honor and privilege, end quote. Another quote, I am most proud of being part of such a remarkable team, end quote, he also added. In 2021, the Conservative Party of Canada asked for a parliamentary committee to look into the claims of political bias known as Robert. Uh, he was accused of feeding information to the Liberal caucus, which, if true, would have given them an advantage against the opposition. So that explains, uh, you know, a lot of things, you know, recently, um, as far as uh, the whole uh, Trudeau thing going on. But, um, but apparently, this guy's been—he's uh, been falling asleep and has political bias. So, um, yeah, good thing he's leaving. Only after five years, so you know, at least it's better than ten. That's called lobbying in some parts of the United States, or all parts actually. Yeah, the political bias is just lobbying. I mean. I mean not necessarily yeah. lobbying is it, political it, it, bias it leads, when... it, it leads to it well yes it does uh, yeah. lobbying well, he... is when money gets involved so yeah, yeah. so he, he is sleeping on the job and has political bias so he is like every other politician just he got caught on it yeah yeah well like obviously he's not you know fully committed to his work because not only is he screwing over his own party for the benefit of the opposition but he's asleep on the job this guy sucks you know, so Charles Robert. Yep. Yeah. Well, let's just be happy he's leaving. You know, even though I'm not in the UK, I can at least appreciate that for them. You know. Anyway, what more. It's Canada. Yeah. Oh, that was Canada. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was Canada. Sorry, not the UK. It was yeah, Canada. You, I remember. I remember you said Canada instead of saying Canada. I was like, what? Yeah. Okay, that's muted. right. I get them confused. They they both have the same terminology and whatnot. You know, House of Commons Parliament. and all that stuff. So. Anyway, more from Rebel News. A bombshell here. Fifth installment of Twitter Files reveals how Trump was banned despite no violation of Twitter's terms of service. Booyah! Right there. Uh, Pow to the I kisser. Don't think a lot, I don't think a lot of people are going to report that same headline. 
I don't I think a lot of reveal. people. I don't think a lot of people are really going to be surprised by that headline. So I yeah. mean, I mean, how is that revealed? We knew it since like. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. see, the thing is, is that it wasn't on documentation. So you know, people had their theories. You know, they had their beliefs and everything. But until something is actually on file, on paper, you know, put in some kind of catalog, then it's not official. So this is the this is when it finally becomes official. So. Um, on Monday, journalist Barry Weiss re released the fifth Twitter files drop, which details the social media platform's ban on former President Donald J. Trump. The fifth installment of the ongoing drops revealed how staffers inside Twitter pushed for the former president to be banned following last year's riot at the U.S. Capitol, despite the company finding no policy violations of the president's tweets. The drop details how the company skirted its own rules on government officials, citing several instances where leaders of other countries made direct calls for violence against groups within and outside of their countries with no lasting repercussions on Twitter, aside from having their tweets deleted. Trump was banned on January 8, 2021, just two days after a mob of rioters stormed the Capitol building and interrupted a certif the certification of Joe Biden's 2020 victory at the election. There was no, no victory. That was stolen. But anyway, according to Weiss, Trump tweeted on the morning of January 8th once to praise his almost 75 million viewers to, voters to write, uh, they will not be disrespectful uh, or they will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way, shape or form, uh, in quotes. In a subsequent treat, tweet, Trump wrote that he would not be attending Biden's inauguration on January 20th. Um, so for further reading on this, like, you know, yeah, this is this is nothing surprising, nothing new to us. We already knew this. But as I said, it is now officiated. We, there is now documented evidence proving, you know, what we already knew to be true. So, I think I think there is a term for a group of people that try to silence the president. Uh, yeah, wouldn't that be treason? Yes. Yeah. Yep. For what? Yeah. So yeah, uh, I I hope to God all the uh, Twitter executives, the former ones at least, that got fired. I hope they all get, uh, you know, like, tried for treason and all that stuff. Because they did. They did do treasonous acts. So. And, uh, you know, Facebook as well and all that stuff. Amazon. Yeah. You know. Who would try? You, you don't have any, uh, you know, any organization that would investigate against them. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Anyway, we're going to move on more from Rebel News. Uh, Printful suspends services for gays against groomers over transphobia. Uh, transphobia. So, uh, Wait, what is what is what is what is Printful? Uh, I'm going to oh, explain oh, okay. it. Okay. It's an anti-gay organization. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, Printful, a service that provides on-demand printing for online T-shirt storefronts, has terminated its service with the anti-grooming activist group Gays Against Groomers. In a public statement, uh, Printful claimed that the conservative organization shares misinformation that goes against the company's values of respect and inclusion. Oh, really? So, uh, so, okay. so, how could you sit there, like, you know, like, how, how can an organization sit there and say that they value respect and inclusion? When they're pushing for people to not be who they are physically, well, they're that not, makes they're not no including sense. them. They're not including them. Yeah. It says so here. They, they are... Go ahead. Yeah. So they they are banning gays. That's uh, being against gays, in my opinion. No. Not inclusive. Like the opposite. Well, no, 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 no. It, can, it co continues on here. Uh, posting on Twitter, uh, Printful wrote that on December 7th, the company suspended gays against groomers from using its services. So these are people against, uh, you know, maps, against uh, groomers, against all these, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. against all these, uh, you know, MAPs um, and uh, who have infiltrated uh, the Alphabet Mafia and is now utilizing that to push their own agenda. So, like, now, uh, you know, everything, like, they're having a whole bunch of infighting and schisms. And everything, because now, like you know, uh, there was a thing a while ago where um, uh, the uh, the like like one of the alphabets was getting annoyed at the other alphabet uh, because um, something to do with uh, tr like with trans with trans people being homophobic or something like. I, I think that the T E R F those. Uh, uh, I think it means trans exclusive radical feminist or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, before we start going off on our own little theories and whatnot, I'm going to continue on reading this article real quick. 
Uh, it continues on, quote, on the surface, this organization claims to protect children from abuse. However, oh, after awesome. taking a closer look at their platform, we, we found the content they share is homophobic, transphobic misinformation that harms the alphabet mafia communities, end quote. Gays Against Groomers argues that so-called gender-affirming transgender surgeries for minors are dangerous to the health of children who undergo the procedures, which include puberty blockers and the removal of breasts. So, yes... Essentially, they are against putting the knife to our children and changing who they are physically, you know, and, and me abusing them mentally. And in doing that, um, this, uh, this company, uh, Printful, is dropping them as a client. So Printful is... I noticed... Pr yeah. Printful I is pro-human mutilation, pro-child mutilation, it sounds like. I, I noticed you were saying alphabet instead of... Uh... You know the letters there. Yeah, because well, they are the they're the Alphabet Mafia. You know, now, I was thinking of Alphabet like the company that owns, <laughs> owns Google. No, 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 no. <laughs> Remember that one joke Dave Chappelle did a while ago? He's like, uh, we have the BLM and the the Antifa and the LGBTQ, no, the thought... Alphabet people. You know, like that's what yeah. he called them, the Alphabet people. Ooh, okay. So because they're a bunch of letters, they're, they're an alphabet. You know. Okay. Yeah. So. She, her, say them, whatever. Anyway, let's we, move on we, up. We suspended the gays because we don't want homophobia on our platform. Y that makes no sense. It I know, no right? Sense. Like That's why I'm saying the Alphabet Mafia, they're eating themselves up, you know, because inevitably one's going to find something wrong with the other, and then there's going to be a whole bunch of infighting, and then they're just going to melt. So very much like how BLM what was what was happening with them. When, why, can't we just be, why can't we just be individuals like we used to be? Why can't we just all be humans on this earth? Like, who cares yeah, like, what you do? Who cares who you are? You're a human. You're on this earth. We're all on this planet together. We're all taking a bite of the big shit, shit sandwich. Just hold my hand and bite with me, okay? You know, come on. Like Reddit says, remember the human. <laughs> yeah. Reddit, like Reddit says, bro. Yeah. Anyway, from yeah. Audio Central, the home field hum, a mystery sound that has been plaguing English Village for years. This sounds like a lot like the mystery booms and whatnot. You know, I'm sure that you're aware of that, Noah. Um, it says yeah. here, for several years now, residents of Homefield, a village in Yorkshire, England, have been affected by a mysterious hum, the source of which has yet to be discovered. Not everyone can hear it, but those who, who do um, claim to have had their lives severely impacted. The Homefield hum, as a mysterious low frequency sound plaguing the English village of Homefield has come to be known, has been making news headlines in the European country for at least a couple of years. But so far, oh. no one has been able to discover its source. Local authorities reportedly carried out an investigation and it also hired an independent consultant to, to get to the bottom of the mystery, but their efforts have so far been in vain. Homefield residents who can hear the mysterious hum describe it as the whirring of a washing machine or an idling diesel engine. It doesn't sound like the most annoying sound in the world, but it takes a uh, toll on a person's mental health and general well-being after a while. It interferes with their sleep and their mood, and to some, uh, they claim to be the, on the edge of a nervous breakdown because of it. Oh. Wow. Um, it's just a hum? hum? Yeah. Like, it sounds, uh, like a fucking, sounds like a psyop. Maybe. Like, Across this part of West... I'm trying to so see... You need to be inside the... Pro to get louder and louder... I'm trying to see if it shows the hum. It's a sonic weapon plot twist. Uh, maybe, or maybe it's like a, a base, you know, like an underground base, or oh uh, yeah, like un underneath the underneath the pavement, yeah. Or maybe, it. maybe it could be the sound made by CERN, you know, traveling uh, through the ground. Where, where, where is this? This is nearby Switzerland, is it? Uh, no, it was somewhere in England. So okay, but that's in Switzerland and French Alps, CERN. Friction, yeah. Well, I mean, like, you yeah, know, but... things can travel through the ground, you know, for a while before coming. I don't know. I'm no geologist or something. I know that, sir, they said they found something amazing recently, but I don't know what it is. I'll probably have to pull that up in the next show on yeah. Saturday, Sunday, whatever. That'd be cool. Yeah. Which I mean, we gotta, like, well, um, I... it'll probably be next year, as in, like, you know, January before we start our UFOlogy yeah. paranormal science uh, uh, show. Thing. All right. So. Yeah, but I think those hums, uh, they were reported also in many cities. Uh, yeah. Or not only there, so... That is true. So there's a lot more to it than that. And as I said before that, we were, you know, the mysterious booms, we all know about that. You know, that's been going on all over the world. Like, Jericho's trumpets, as one person called it, you know. 
stuff like that. Anyway, uh, more from Audio Central here. Students invent an invisibility cloak that makes people invisible to AI security cameras. Here we go. Oh, you're just, I've seen the cloak thing. That's cool. I've seen it. Yeah, it says here a team of graduate students at China's Wuhan University recently unveiled an innovative invisibility cloak that circumvents AI-powered security cameras. China is yep, one of Chinese. the world's... China is one of the world's most heavily surveilled countries, uh, which, by the way, uh, they have two cameras for every citizen there. So they have two billion, uh, not billion, no, two million, two, no, two billion cameras in China. Um, with wow. AI-powered cameras being used for everything from monitoring employees' toilet habits to students' attention in classrooms. But as advanced as these surveillance systems may be, they are not perfect. A group of Chinese graduate students recently showcased an intriguing invention that they claim to, to essentially be an invisibility cloak against surveillance cameras powered by artificial intelligence. So All I know is that the way those things work is when you put them in front of you, it moves the light from a different direction to where it's sitting. So it just, it's like a waveguide, but like it, it redirects the light so you don't see anything. Or so it appears that you don't see anything. It's light displacement. It, it, it's hard to notice, yeah, but it's just hard to notice you because yes, light displacement. Well, let's see here what it says. It says, called Invisid Defense, the rather regular-looking camouflage coat can allegedly allow anyone wearing it to get past AI-powered surveillance cameras without being spotted. The customized camo... There is camo another... Okay, yeah. I was going to say, there is another invisibility cloak I've seen. I don't know if it's from China, but it was like the military. I think it might have been the Navy. All right. It had it. Yeah, I can find it if you... I'll let you talk for a minute. I'll find it. The customized camo prints fool the cameras for during the daytime and embedded thermal devices that emit different temperatures throw off the surveillance cameras, uh, infrared imaging, uh, in infrared thermal imaging sensors at night. Quote, we spent a lot of energy preparing for this, uh, including the product's design and development. In quote, Wai Huai, the computer science graduate student who designed the code's uh, core algorithm, told Vice World News. Another quote, we had to use an algorithm to design at least uh, at least conspicuous image that would render camera vision ineffective, end quote. So yeah, so as you were saying, it's there's uh, the, yeah, light differential, yeah. uh, tricking so the light there's, there's the uh, there's the one from the United States military in the Mikeless channel. All right. And that, that's the one that I was talking about that did that also. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember hearing about that, uh, nanotechnology and all that stuff. Yeah, so they're just redirecting the way the light you know, bends or curves. Essentially, it's, yes. It's, it's path, it's path. Yeah. yeah, but this is nothing new. I mean, one of the uh, James Bond movies from a while ago, um, there's a scene where um, yeah. they're standing I saw in it, a... I, elevator right behind them, or in front of them. They, they walk up to the desk and he never notices. Yeah, but uh, this uh, kind of camouflage, it doesn't seem to fool any human. It, uh, it's no, it, it fools the AI in the camera, but like yeah. the cloak itself is hard, it's easy, it's easy to notice. Hey, there's something standing there, but it's like, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just tricking the AI from like actually like making a uh, like, you know, oh, this is like shy P or whatever, like from face face recognition. I mean, you, stuff. You, it's not like it's not like you can go out in combat and public combat in a war zone and wear this thing. You could probably snipe while wearing it, I guess. Oh, yeah. Snipe. Well, no, this is I not mean, for this is nothing like what you were talking about. This is specifically yeah. for cameras. Uh, this oh, is yeah. light confusion to confuse artificial intelligent cameras. The other thing yeah. you're talking about, an actual invisibility cloak, is as I was saying before you interrupted me, yeah. uh, that one scene Sorry. from uh, the double, one of the 007 movies, they were in that tunnel underground, and uh, yeah. Q was like, oh, James, this is your new car, and it's just an empty platform. And he's like, you know, oh, I think you've gone mad. And then he, like, he's walking behind uh, the empty platform, and his legs get all weird, and you realize... It's a cloaking device for the car. What it's I doing? Don't, I don't think the one. I don't think the one I watched was a 007 movie, but I remember there was a movie and they had like this cloaking technology that refracted the light. So they placed it in front of a building. Oh, yeah. Like, no. What know. I'm saying is this is nothing new. Like as far yeah. as you know, in pop culture, this has been around for at least you know 40, 50 years. If Harry not Potter. Harry Potter. Well, Harry Potter yeah. is just a green screen. He literally yeah, just I takes know. a green screen and hides in it. Like. Yeah. I, yeah. That's one of the easiest things you can do in, in the movie universe right now, movie making. Yeah, it worked. It worked real well in the movie. It did. Anyway. Anyway, let's move on up here. More from Audio Central. Man gets arrested after calling police 2,000 times in nine days to harass and insult them. 
Wow. Uh, is that is that actually what he did? I need to I need to read this. Uh, I'm gonna read this here. An elderly Japanese man was recently arrested after calling a police precinct 2,060 times in nine days to yell at the staff there and call them tax yeah. thieves and big stupid a holes. Uh, between September 30th oh. and October 8th, the 67-year-old man from Saitama Prefecture called the prefectural police headquarters a total of 2,060 times to yell at the staff uh, and tell them that they should all be fired. That's an average of one call oh. for every six minutes and took a, a total talk time of around 27 hours over a nine-day oh. interval. He uh, called... It was Saitama Prefecture that he called the police? Uh, uh, yeah. Saitama. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Saitama yeah, Prefecture. Yeah. So huh. th this guy was this guy was harassing the police until he yeah he was trying I think he was trying to get arrested. I well I don't know what you would do otherwise to do to for that goal but uh, it says here eventually police raided the man's house and arrested him on the ground of obstructing of obstructing police business. He admitted to the charges and said quote I knew the police would come to me uh, for me someday end quote. Well yeah he, you called and harassed them. He's just he's just, just testing them at that yeah. point. But yeah. Uh, so don't, don't don't call the police on a, on a regular basis, folks. <laughs> yeah, no, really dumb. Really, really, really dumb. Really. And yeah, especially he, if that regular basis is every six minutes going for a lap. Yeah, yeah, he should have. Yeah, he should have gotten some good video game that would have been twenty-seven hours spent better. Yeah, dude, yeah, this guy should have gotten you, you could, God of War could, Ragnarok or something. I was gonna say you could beat Ragnarok in that amount of time. That's what yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, we have a lot of Ragnarok memes in our. Yes, word. All right, let's move on up here. More from Oddity Central. Woman is going blind after tattooing her eyes blue and purple. Uh, yeah, oh, you well, think? That, that, that was smart. That was really smart. Really stupid. Wait, it says yeah, here... Yeah, go down. I want to see the picture. Uh, we'll see the picture here in a second. I'm going to read this article first. Um, a 32-year-old woman in Belfast, Ireland, is apparently going blind after tattooing her eyeballs blue and purple despite the warning of her seven-year-old daughter. So even a child is more smart, is more intelligent than this it's idiot. Not even, not, even, not even 13 yet, not even a teenager. No, seven years old. It's like, yeah. bro, what are you doing? You're gonna put a needle in your eye? What do you think is gonna happen, you idiot? You know? Uh, that, that reminds me of a certain Dead Space meme somewhere. Oh God, oh. yeah, the needle thing, yeah. Like, it can needle in my, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, this is not the first time I've heard about people tattooing their eyes and going blind. Like, it goes on Wait, here to well, say- how is that? How is this more than once? Well, like, you know, I, several years ago, I remember seeing a meme about, like, some lady who tattooed her eye black or something, and then she went oh, yeah. blind. It's like, you put a needle with ink in your eye. What do you think is going to happen? Seriously. Anyway. You're like trying, it's like you're... There's, those, those, those people, those doctors, shouldn't be allowed to perform surgeries like that. They're not supposed to. These aren't surgeries. These are tattoos. You know? Well, whatever, whatever the fuck, it, it's, yeah, not, it's not okay to tattoo your eyes. I know. Indigo or something. Hey, you know, at the end of the day, you got to make a buck one way or another. If somebody wants to blind themselves, you know, it's their eyes, not yours. So, you know. Or you could just not, or you could just know, you know, not complain about going blind once you blinded yeah. yourself. Yeah. Anyway, it goes on here to say, Anyana Peterson, a young law student and fan of body modification influencer Amber Luke, who famously went blind for three weeks after tattooing the white of her eyeballs a bright blue, is slowly going blind after following in the footsteps of her idol. So this is the same person I was um, talking about. The same I'm, person. Okay, I've never heard about this. Yeah, no, I've I remember. She tattooed her eyes blue, and then she went blind. And then so, so she's following in her footsteps, and now she's going, Bro, how stupid do you have to be? How stupid do you have to be? You know? Evidently, it's very, very stupid. Uh, I mean... She's uh, the mother of five. Oh, great. So she's also a mother of five. Okay, well. Okay, okay so she just lost her parenting privileges. Bro, like this, this, she's so dumb. She doesn't even know how to close her legs. Probably the really mother of five was apparently probably... in awe of Luke's unique look and decided to have her own eyeballs tattooed in 2020, despite the warning of her seven-year-old daughter who asked her what would happen if she went blind. So. Yeah, so this girl is now nine, has four siblings, and all of them have lost a mother. Uh, well, they still have a mother, but I mean, but look, she has not like, for long, not, not for long. Yeah, well, oh, she wow. that is that is she has out. a split tongue, piercings everywhere, what appears to be a motherboard inside her forehead, and now her she's eyes trying, are, she's are trying, she's, tattooed. She's so. assimilated with the universe. She's become one with the machine. And oh stupid. god, she's a Borg! Kill her! <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, like Doctor Who reference. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, Borg is from uh, Star Trek. No, but, okay, but 
you know, Cybermen. Same yeah, shit. well, Cybermen is different. Yeah. So, her seven-year-old daughter is more educated than her. Uh, also, can you focus on one of those pupils? Like, her whole pupil... Yeah, it's this... It's like an inch. It's like... No, the left one especially. It's really big. And there's something around it. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah. faded. Well, no, that's that's the. Well, that's... She just she destroyed her irises because yeah, and her eye her eyes are letting in too much light. So now she's like going blind in every way possible. Well, you know, or is you know, if, if she's fine. that stupid, let her be stupid. You know, so. Aren't your aren't your irises the part that, that focus the cones and rods? That's what gives your eyes a color. I think I don't know. Like I'm not an eye doctor. So. The pupils, the pupils let the light in, so you can see. But if you let too much in, you will go blind. That is true. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on up here. More from Audi Central. Meet Thor Twenty Four, possibly the craziest truck ever built. Yes, it is. Oh, let's see. Oh. Yeah. Let's yeah. See. see a picture uh, real quick. It says here, Thor Twenty Four is a unique big rig, often referred to as the most powerful big rig ever built, because of its horsepower rating, three thousand nine hundred seventy-four horsepower. Holy shit. Reach through, like a 24, a reach through a 24 cylinder engine with 12 superchargers. Oh my god. You know, I want to see. It looks like a train in the photo I can see on the right. Yeah, you, we'll see it here in a second. Let me finish reading here. Yeah. Can you imagine the God of Thunder in truck form? Me neither, but builder Mike Hurrah definitely could, and the result is nothing short of insane. The 44 foot yeah. long big rig is powered by two 852 cubic inch V12 diesel engines and 12 superchargers and require four and drag parachutes. Uh, to deploy out of the rear bumper to stop when it reaches its peak speed of 130 miles per hour, 209 kilometers per hour. It apparently took Hurrah seven years and thousands of hours to build and cost over seven million dollars. So, wow. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, it's a freight train basically. That's it's a about, big about truck. Choo choo choo. Yeah. Little things coming up the sides. Oh, it's got it on the top too. It looks like I thought it was like a Gatling gun or something. Look at that thing, not there. Like, yeah. Oh no, these are engines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's just no, like. I can see that, but... Like, but look at the size of that gas tank, bro. Like, it's like four gas yeah, tanks really. in one. Huh. Yeah, it, it looks like it looks like it's got a damn. It's it's just a train. Basically. It's a train. It essentially is, but hey, that's not as fast as the fastest tractor in the world, which got up to like one hundred and fifty point three or something miles per hour, or one hundred fifty three point eight. The fast, but but the fastest lawnmower. Uh, oh my god! I'm just, I'm just making up stuff now. I don't know, but that that might actually be a thing. But anyway, let's oh. move on <laughs> up here from UPI, better known as Oopy. Woman dons 19 underpants in 30 seconds to break world record. Oh well, what a what a great change of pace. Women putting on clothes for once. How about that? A so U.S. woman living in Ireland. 19... What? She put on 19 pairs at the same time. Yes. So Where anyway... did they all go? On her on her head? <laughs> Confused. Well, where do you put underwear on, you numb nut? <laughs> if I wasn't making a dirty joke, you wouldn't have noticed. Wait, what? Anyway, a U.S. Uh, woman living I... in Ireland broke a Guinness World Record by pulling on 19 pairs of underpants in 30 seconds. Rachel Smith, who moved to Dublin earlier this year, said she decided to take on the record for what? most underpants pulled on in 30 seconds uh, because it reminded her of making costume quick changes while performing in theater productions. Yeah, that's right. They have to uh, really be quick with that. Yeah. Quote, yeah. when looking for a record attempt to break, uh, this one stood out to me. I think this record is a great combination of speed and strategy and matches my skill set well, end quote, Schmidt told Guinness World Records. Schmidt was able to don 19 pairs of panties in the, tal in the allotted time, beating the record of 17, which was set by Toshiaki Katsuga in Japan uh, prior. At least she didn't die of asphyxiation. Uh, you know, like someone, you know, people put on a lot of shirts. You can put on a lot of shirts at once. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you put on too many, you'll fucking you'll fall over. You'll fall over. Yeah. And then you can't breathe. All that fabric is crushing yeah. down on you. That's what so. I'm saying. Your lungs. Yeah, your lungs, basically. Yeah. But yeah, well, yeah. uh, yeah, so, um, uh, good. Oh, uh, why don't, why don't watch the TikTok? <laughs> Kidding, the video. Anyway, more from UPI. <laughs> Scuba divers near miss with a boat caught on camera. Now, I don't like this term near miss because that implies they nearly missed. No, it's supposed to be a near hit. They almost got hit. Yeah. Oh my god, you're right. Dude, there was one time I was I was on a snorkeling boat in Cabo, and we, we bumped into another snorkeling boat when, just before we took off, like really took off. So like they're, they're like at the dock. So 
I we went off, and then right before I bumped, I moved my hand out of the way, like it was around the edge of the boat. So I could have had my hand cleaved off if I was like in another universe. I probably did, but well, it probably wouldn't have. Off my, it probably wouldn't have cut your hand off, but it would have probably crushed broke, something. It would have broke. Yeah, it would have broken my fingers. And I remember it was my right hand, but I yeah. stuck it over the edge of the boat. I was just had it. I had it there for like an hour before we took off. So then. They start to move, and I almost don't move my hand out of the way. To it literally could have broken my fingers. Well, let's be happy that you didn't have your fingers going to get broken. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. Anyway, it goes yeah. on here. A scuba diver in Hawaii captured video of his intense uh, close call with a speeding boat that nearly ran him over. Christopher Lastra, at the age of 30, said she was spearfishing off Magic Island and returned to the surface to find herself directly in the path of an oncoming boat approaching at a high speed. Uh, Lester was able to move out of the way and avoid injury with only his flipper being uh, damaged by the vessel's propeller. Uh, hold on a second. Lastra, his? Her? Wait, so, wait. He. Okay, so Christopher Lastra, okay, it's a, it is a guy. Okay. Uh, he admitted that the close call was his own fault as he was diving without a buoy or flag to mark his location. Alright, yeah, you gotta do that. <laughs> Quote, I should have had a buoy out there. I knew the law and I just decided not to bring it. End quote. Lastra told Hawaii News Story. So, from now on, if you're out in the ocean diving, put a buoy there. It could save your life. So, let's see the video here. Oh, here we go. All new tonight, it's Lastra was spearfishing off Magic Island Thursday morning. When within seconds, he wow. walked out of the way of a speeding boat. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, yeah, holy shit. Sliced up by the boat's propeller. Wow. Wow, he was right under it too. So, so that that could have taken his head off. Oh, the, easily. You know, very fast. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, <laughs> anyway, more from Oopy. Rattlesnake found in ball dispenser at Arizona driving range. Not good. Um, it says here an Arizona reptile wrangler was summoned to a golf driving range to remove a rattlesnake that was fa that had found its way into a ball dispenser. The snake relocation team posted a video to YouTube showing what happened when a snake wrangler named Marisa Mackey was summoned uh, to the Top Golf location in Scottsdale. The video shows Mackey being directed by Top Golf employees to a ball dispenser machine where a loud rattling sound could be heard. The reptile wrangler was able to use her tongs to safely ensnare the western diamondback rattlesnake and place it into a bucket for safe relocation to a less inhabited area. Quote, I've actually gotten a rattlesnake at the same time, uh, at, this, at the same top golf uh, before, and co workers of mine have removed some as well. Uh, it is surrounded by desert, so you are in their habitat, end quote, Mackey told the Tribune newspaper. Uh, quote, another quote here, I wouldn't say it's an unusual place to find one, end quote. Uh, so apparently. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah uh, th this reminds me of the time that I lived on a golf course in La Quinta. In uh, SoCal, I've been SoCal, so. Ah. But a, a king snake came down from the mountains, and my dad trapped it in a shoebox until it slithered out and went away. Huh? King snake, yeah. So like he released it, or it found its way out by itself? It, we we put it in the shoebox and left it like half open, and then it like slithered away. We kept the door shut for a while. Ah. The, the glass the glass sliding doors to the backyard. Ah, like, we okay. lived on a golf course. We were on the 18th hole in that that house. Oh wow. Yeah. Did you ever get golf balls like break your windows or anything like that? We had really strong windows in that house, but we did uh, get a, the occasional golf ball hitting us in the hitting us in the window to like this big giant window that went out uh, from the kitchen. So it was like dang. the kitchen family room area, and it, but, it hit the golf for the mess. Could you imagine though going to a driving range and getting a ball? There's a rattlesnake there. It's like, yo, what the hell? And apparently, that's a normal occurrence for that one. Yeah, this, so. I had a similar, yeah, like I said, with the king snake. It's not a rattle; it's never rattle, but it's essentially the same kind of snake. Almost. Yeah. Well, it's, it's venomous. It wasn't. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a cobra. It wasn't a king cobra. It was no, a king snake. No, but it's a venomous yeah, yeah. snake. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So it was. A, it was mildly venomous compared to most other snakes, but we did. We let it slither back on its way up into the mountains. Yeah. Anyway, Blob was going to say like, something. Yeah. I I said it's good that they removed it because I'm pretty sure it is not allowed under the golf rules to use a rattlesnake instead of a golf ball. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's frowned upon. So, yeah. Anyway, I went down the go. I went going. Uh, more from uh, actually here going into NPR here. Uh, Santa's gathered by the thousands to drink and be merry at SantaCon, New York City. I had no idea there was a SantaCon. So. I had no idea. So apparently there. Wait, wait, wait. Where, where, where is uh, Black Santa? Black Santa. <laughs> 
Oh. Uh, right there, I think. Wait, no, I don't see one. Oh, there's one in the back of the hoodie. Why is he wearing a Santa's cap? Right uh, there. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, anyway, <laughs> people are bringing Red Hats coats and room for plenty of beer on Saturday at the annual SantaCon celebration returns yeah. in New York City. And this happened uh, last Saturday, actually. The holiday-themed uh, pub crawl emerged after Santa Claus-dressed attendees first gathered in a kind of uh, performance art in the 1990s and began frequenting bars in the early 2000s. It is now this a full-scale like operation with organizers, drink specials, and a charity drive. So it's a whole we event. Need to yeah, we need to have the tavern brawl. <laughs> uh, no, like a tavern crawl. crawl. As in, like, you know, you go to one bar, you have a beer, you go to another bar, you have another beer. Like, if you've ever it's seen... Like if you've ever seen the movie This Is the End, um, no, not that, not that one. Um, uh, the The World's End. That's the movie. The World's oh. End. Oh, uh, that's a pub oh, okay. crawl. So you know, a pub crawl, a tavern crawl, a bar crawl. They're all the same. So this started off as like you know people dressed as Santa, you know, doing a bar crawl, and now it's an actual whole thing, and that's really cool, you know. So. I, I gotta I gotta attend this one day. But anyway. Oh okay nice. Yeah, let's move on up here. More from AP News. Pricey pants from 1857 go for 114 thousand dollars. Raise Levi's uh, Levi's questions. Levi, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say it's Levi. Uh, pulled from a sunken uh, trunk. Sorry. No, like they look stained and disgusting and old. Well, yeah, because they're old. This is, is not this an auction. This is, this was an auction. Yes, if you let me read, you'll understand. Uh, pulled from a sunken trunk at an 1857 shipwreck off the coast of North Carolina, work pants that auction officials describe as the oldest known pair of jeans in the world have sold for $114,000. The white heavy-duty miner's pants with a five-button fly were among 270 Gold Rush era artifacts that sold for a total of nearly $1 million in Reno last weekend, according to Hollibard Western American Collections. They, there is disagreement about whether the pricey pants have any ties to the father of modern-day blue jeans, Levi Strauss, as they predate by 16 years the first pair officially manufactured by his San Francisco-based uh, Levi Strauss and Company uh, in 1873. Some say historical evidence suggests these are linked to Strauss, who, uh, who was a wealthy wholesaler of dry goods at the time, and the pants could be a very early version of what would become the iconic jeans. So this is interesting. This is a uh, we have a historical debate here starting it because this predates blue jeans, these pants, and this brings up the question: Were these the prototype to what we know and love today? You know, what have gone down in history as the working man's pants? You know, are they denim? Uh, n I don't think so. Okay. Um, yes, I think this is before then. denim, like, okay. uh, but um, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna read this one quote here. The pants are not Levi's, nor do I believe they are Miner's work pants. In quote, um, she wrote to an email in the Associated Press. Uh, Tracy Pennick, uh, the company's historian and archive director, uh, she says any claims about their origin are speculation. So we have a we have a this is a major uh, historical event right here transpiring right before our eyes. So I want to have for the history show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, if you right. give if you give me one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars, I get you ten uh, pairs of uh, fresh pants. Huh? How uh, how many uh, months could you rent out in a in an apartment? How you could buy the apartment building actually for that much? Not in California. Well, no, but like you could a cheap one. Not in California. Well, yeah, but still, any someone else could. For a hundred thousand dollars, one hundred fourteen. Well, maybe like you could rent it. You could rent it. How many months would that last renting it anyway? It's Probably a year. Probably yes. You could spend that much money in a year, or you could spend it on a pair of pants. I'd rather spend it on a pair of pants, to be honest. You know, you would? that's a major historical artifact. Hell yeah, I would okay. buy those. Okay. okay, okay, yeah. I'm also sending. I'm also sending something in my list. We can talk about it at the end. I uh, see. It's, it's about the about the FTX SBF thing. All right. Well, we've already spoken about that. Um, yeah. So that that's another a thing for another update, maybe next week or something. I guess. Well, why are you following Nancy Pelosi's stock tracker? So, oh, that wasn't me. Someone posted oh, that in a group. 
And I can, someone uh, posted that in the, That's actually Nancy Pelosi's tracker. Yeah, but, I know. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on up here. More from AP News. California girl licensed to own unicorn if she finds one. What? What? Isn't it like a? Is it like a pillow that says that? <laughs> or uh, something? Well, let, let's see here. A girl named Madeline with a vivid imagination and remarkable awareness of how bureaucracy can dash dreams got her wish when she asked Los Angeles Animal Control Authorities for a license to own a unicorn if she's able to find one. The first of its kind permit came with strings attached, however. The mythical creature must be provided ample exposure to sunlight, moonbeams, and rainbows, have its horn polished at least once a month with a soft, with a soft cloth. Director it's a Marcia this is May like a toy. Director Marcia Mayetta of the co County Department of Animal Care and Control uh, sent the girl a heart-shaped rose-colored metal tag with the permanent unicorn license emblazoned on it, along with a white fuzzy unicorn doll with pink ears, purple hooves, and a silver horn. The department's response came after the girl, uh, the girl wrote in a brief letter last month, quote, Dear L.A. County, I would like your approval if I can have a unicorn in my backyard if I can find one, end quote. Mayetta commended the girl for her, quote, sense of responsible pet ownership to seek permission in advance, end quote, and for thoughtfully considering the requirements for providing a loving home to animals. And there's uh, just a few more uh, tidbits in that article, but I'll let you guys uh, go to it in the underbar no the description for further reading yourself. But no, is she, that is, the license? she is licensed oh. by the, uh, the city of Los Angeles in California to own a unicorn if she ever finds one. Yeah, I want, so, I want to link to that article just so I can see what people think of it. Okay, let me uh, let me post this here in uh, Mike list for you. Yeah, so that, you can that's spread that's that. gonna be yeah. That, uh, that's funny. That's awesome. You know, straight out you know down here in uh, my stomping ground. You know. Yeah, that that's pretty cool actually. There's yeah. there's still is love in the world. You know, today. So. Seldom, seldom. Yep. Anyway, uh, our last but not least, certainly not least, article here. Oops! Village employees got paid twice and official quits. Ha! <laughs> hey, money, money, payday, times two, bro. It says here, the village manager in a northern Michigan community has resigned after an investigation of $32,000 in mistaken payroll payments to public workers. The error in Elk Rapids occurred in October of 2021, but the public was in the dark for nearly a year until a resident began asking questions. The Traverse City Record Eagle reported. The newspaper said $15,000 still has yet to be repaid. Nearly 40 people got extra pay because the village mistakenly debited bank accounts twice, according to investigation. Nope. The mistake was not immediately reported to the village council or the, uh, the public and was not quickly fixed, according to attorney Scott Howard's report. So, and, of course, for further reading, please go to the underbar of the description. Uh, give these websites the foot traffic. So, But uh, nice, they got paid twice. You know, like but they have to repay it. That's something so I'd like to happen to me. You know, official quits. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, yeah. like you know, he made a whoops and then uh, you know didn't do anything to to fix it, and then he's just like, ah, oh, screw it, I quit. Let somebody yeah. else deal with the problem. So, but yeah, he probably got his ear. He's probably got his ear chewed out about that. Yeah, I hope maybe he did. Was, maybe it was maybe it was before. I don't know. I mean, that's why he quit. Yeah. Well, anyone who makes that kind of mistake and doesn't do anything about it doesn't deserve a job. So yeah. yeah. But anyway, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar of the description for any links you may be interested in, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. Uh, for your dose of different, on and otherwise unknown news, we stream Monday through Friday at two. Uh, pardon me, at two p.m. Pacific time, uh, which is um, three p.m. Mountain, four p.m. Uh, Central, five p.m. Eastern. And I don't know what time it is in Germany. Like, what? Midnight? 11 p.m. Ah, 11 p.m. So we're still on the same day. Awesome. Anyway, for all of you and all of us, I am Ao Xander. I am Noah. And I'm Protoblog. And you, of course, are you. And until you catch us tomorrow, or if you're interested in history, we have a history show every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time. Anyway, until then, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! Hello!